Zaman in London wants to talk about the revolution and the arms industry. Zaman, welcome to the show. Good evening, Mr. Galloway. Good and, evening, um, sir. It's, it's a very, very noble job you are doing. It's only, as you have just said, the press TV who's keeping, you know, this information flowing. Otherwise, you won't hear. These, these things have been going on for ages, Mr. Galloway, in the Middle East, and especially in the Saudi Arabia, but it's control so, you know, ruthlessly, and they're still controlling so ruthlessly. But luckily, the press TV and you guys are, you know, keeping highlighting the injustices. Now, as far as the... Revolution, Mr. Galloway is concerned. We know, we, we know historically, most revolutions in the name of democracy have not achieved. It takes brave and courageous protesters to make a revolution, but it takes citizens to make a democracy. I, 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 I I'm sorry to say, but I think it's the music to the ears of the West. What's happening in? In, in the Middle East, because another 50 years they will be controlled by the West. I hope this revolution or uprising keep on and on, and they find some leader like Khomeini, like Mao Zedong, like you know, some leader with some 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 kind of know. you know theory. I know Zaman, you've got a leadership fetish, my friend. Leaders are produced on the streets of the revolutions, just because we don't know their names or because they haven't written a tract. Uh, a Marxist-Leninist tract on a pathway to revolution doesn't mean that they're not leaders. Trust me, on the streets of Yemen, where day after day now for months the people have been facing the armed forces of the dictator, they're leaders. They don't need some theoretician, some great theoretician to call himself their leader. Let's talk to Mohammed in Bahrain, on Bahrain. Mohammed, welcome to the show. Hello, Mr. Galloway. You're welcome. Yes, Speak uh, up, sir. I want Go yes, ahead. You're on the air. Please give you the other side of the story. You have to know, I am in Bahrain. I know exactly what's going on. Yeah. What we have in Bahrain, whether you like it or not, it is a sectarian issue. And I will give you the facts. The fact is, the 45% of the parliament who are Shia, they resign. The rest of the parliament who are voted for, elected, the Sunnis, none of them resigned. Some Shia ministers, they resigned. Some Sun the Sunnis, zero of them resigned. You have the GCC force in Bahrain is only here against any Iranian threat. Whether you know it or not, I'm sorry, Iranian officials officially uh, stated last year that Bahrain is the 14th government of Iran. Why don't you show the hundreds of people executed in Iran? Look, as... Uh, as beautiful as a revolution sounds, not everywhere where you have protest, it is a revolution. There is exactly only a sectarian issue in Bahrain. What we have is Shias who want to overthrow the Sunni regime. The Sunnis will not allow it. Simple as that. If you want reforms, yes, the Sunnis are ready for reforms. They called Shias for dialogue. They gave them their hands open. The crown prince opened his hands. For one month, they did not come to dialogue. In fact, they first started pr peaceful protests, but with time, they take it, made it more violent. They well, well, uh, well uh, uh, enough. I, I think I've given you enough time. Uh, in English, we have a saying that I've given you enough rope and you just hanged yourself. You're either a member of the tiny ruling elite uh, in Bahrain, although if you were, you'd probably be in a casino uh, or a bordello in the West somewhere by now. So it's more likely that you're a stooge, that you're a factotum of that regime. The GCC force that you refer to as being in Bahrain, occupying your country against an Iranian threat, I saw them kill two people just today. One of them was a late middle-aged, overweight, civilian man standing with his hands like this, entirely unarmed, and I saw him killed by the GCC. He was not an Iranian. He was not an Iranian threat. He was not any kind of threat at all. Now, you talk to me about a parliament which is a farce, which has no power of any kind. The Al-Khalifa dictatorship 
rules your country. Whether the parliament is 45, 55, 49, 51, or as it used to be, 75, 25. The decisions and the power belong to the Khalifa killers who've just brought foreign armies armed by America into your country to kill your fellow Bahrainians, who I remind you are Muslims, Muhammad, just like you. So American weapons fired by Saudi soldiers to kill Bahrainis who are Muslims just like you. And you have the nerve to come on television. But mind you, we can't see your face. Because if we could, shame would be written all over it. Let's see if Ahmad in Bahrain has got anything better to say. Ahmad, welcome to the show. Hi, Mr. George. It's, 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 great, it's great speaking to you. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, I really, really admire your speaker. And I have been a great follower of you for four or five years. Thank and you, I almost agreed with 99.9% .9 of your previous features and your previous political ideas. Uh, I'd have to respectfully, though, say that I do disagree on a few points about Bahrain, uh, maybe especially since I'm living in Bahrain. Uh, first of all, I'm not one of the elite. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have an elite class in Bahrain. I'm a normal citizen, and I myself have not found a job for approximately two years. And, uh, and I would not mind a better standard of living, a better education, free health care, a sense of security, an elected government, and all of those basic human rights that all citizens around the world want. Uh, the matter of fact is that this was a purely Shiite revolution. If it was not, I would be standing with them. Well, if, it, it, if it is, if it is, then it's shame on you that you didn't join it. Don't you see that? But how, you've just described join, a situation, my join, friend. How can you join a revolution that is based on a that is based on a religious ideology? No, it's not at now, all based on a religious I, I ideology. No, it isn't. This is false propaganda. The revolution is demanding an end to the royal dictatorship in the country. Why can't you support that? What's Shiite about that? Why should you support a royal dictator just because he's a Sunni like you? Why? No, I don't support. Well, join the I revolution to get rid of them. No, I would not mind an elected government. But this was you would not mind an elected revolution. government. Well, let's bank that. It's not exactly unequivocal, but let's bank it. You're not going to get an elected government as long as you've got a dictator. And you're complaining that the people giving their lives to get rid of the dictator are, you say, all Shiite. I happen to know that they're not all Shiite because I'm in touch with them on almost a daily basis. Many of them are not Shiite. But if, insofar as most of them are Shiite, shame on you that you're sitting at home wishing for an elected government but not ready to go out on the street and actually fight for one. I don't know what's wrong with you people. Ali in London on Bahrain. Ali, go ahead. George. Yes. Uh, George, um, basically I just want to say we should not fall for the um, sectarian propaganda from the um, Western Zionist-controlled media. Um, these people do not care in whether we are Sunni or Shiite. This is a mafia that wants to divide the people who want to be free and exactly. don't want to sell their, um, their country for a few uh, weak um, U.S. dollars. Uh, yeah. The truth is America is um, scared yeah. of any, any threat to the petrodollar. Ali, Ali, Ali do, you, do you think that Robert Gates is a follower of the Sunnah? You he think Robert care. Gates cares whether somebody's a Sunni or a Shia? They don't, they don't care. They're just scared that these Gulf nations will team up with Iran and sell their um, oil and gas for something other than weak paper, basically. That's what it, they, they're scared that they might demand euros like Saddam Hussein did. And um, if you remember what happened to Saddam Hussein, he was their little puppet when um, he was sent into um, Iran. And uh, when he went into Kuwait, they betrayed him. Um, they should remember these things. And these are the modern-day pharaohs, and they were awful. I'm Sunni myself, but I support the Bahraini people. Excellent, and Ali. Thanks for that. I'm sorry uh, to cut you short, because I want the last word to be to a woman in Bahrain. It's Fatima in Bahrain on Bahrain. Fatima, welcome to the show. Yeah, hello, hi. Go ahead, please. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted I wanted to to uh, to talk about my point of view. 
Okay, you you, uh, you guys are looking one side of you, you and you're ignoring the 300,000 people who are with the government. And I, I don't know what, what kind of information you're getting. Did you see the video of the dead body, which was true, but what, the police dead, uh, police dead body was laying on the floor, and the Shia protesters were shoot, like kicking him and throwing Well, you're giving it away you, again, you see, Fatima. Yes, you know. Shia, 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 you're seeing this these visions in front of your eyes. Why don't you open your Quran and read it and understand it and know how wrong you are. I'll be back next week, God willing.